Hey guys, today I'm here with Andy and we're gonna be talking about two primary things. So we're gonna be talking about how to identify and find professional clients and how to avoid the amateurs. And then the second thing that we're gonna be talking about is how to go after the clients that you really, really want and not waiting for these random clients to contact you. So I'm excited to dive in. Andy, thank you for being here. How are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me on your show, appreciate it. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Do you want to kind of start with just like a quick overview or background on yourself before we dive into, you know, addressing those questions? Yeah, sure. Um, my background is I started as a copywriter in agencies r- right off the street. I managed to talk my way into an agency without any experience, not having gone to school for it. Um, just talked my way in. Um, I worked for six agencies. Uh, and then after that, went freelance, worked freelance as a copywriter for six years, and then uh, merged that into starting my first agency, which I grew with a partner from two people to 30 people. After five years, we were acquired. Uh, two companies were interested in buying us. We picked one of them, and that went through. And of course, when those things happen six months later, you're free to do what you want. And so, um, stupidly enough, perhaps, uh, I decided I wanted to do another agency. So with a different partner, started the second one, uh, grew that from two to 28, 30 people, same size, sort of. Uh, and I retired from it, uh, sold my shares back to my partners. So successful retirement and um, spent, I don't know, three, four years traveling, went to all over the place, uh, Mexico, Portugal, Italy, wherever we liked. Uh, and then I wrote a book, uh, How to Start a Successful Creative Agency. And that's where I am today. Um, I still work for a few select clients, writing for them. Um, and I've got this book and probably thinking of uh, at some point doing a second version of the book. But that's it. So I've, I've kind of seen everything and I've gone through, you know, having been in the business for quite a while, gone through all the iterations and phases and, you know, from, from print and traditional media to TV commercials, radio commercials, all that stuff, uh, to internet, social media, email marketing. Um, so that's my background. I, I love it. And I know the two questions are, are pretty related. So I'll let you start on whichever one first. Okay. Um, I think start maybe the notion of going after the clients that you really want and and not waiting for random clients to contact you. Well, if you're just starting as a freelance copywriter, you you are going to end up doing everything and anything because A, you need the money, uh, you need the clients, you need stuff for your portfolio, you need to start get going, you need to grow. So you're probably not too fussy at the early stages because you just need to get a foothold and and get moving, right? But after a while, I think you need to start to focus and decide what you really want to do. And that's two areas that you can think of this, two ways to think of it. The first is, what kind of clients do you want to work for? What what do you do best? What, What do you enjoy doing? And it may not be obvious uh, at the beginning, it may not be the big glamour stuff. So maybe it's not all, you know, high fashion and Ferraris. It's maybe something a little more straightforward, but it's work that you enjoy doing. So that to me is something that people should think about because there's nothing worse than working on stuff that you really hate doing. You have no feel for, you don't really like it. It doesn't come naturally to you and you're fighting it all the way. So, you know, think about that and, and pick what you like. And, and then once you decide that, once you understand sort of broadly where you want to go, start looking for those clients, start going after them, start figuring out, maybe make contacts on social media, uh, if you have a website with a blog, start writing about that, start you know, getting knowledgeable about those industries, read their websites, learn their businesses, get yourself up to speed. Um, and then hopefully you get one or two clients in that sector, and then you can start building on those relationships because inevitably there will be clients within the sector that don't compete against each other, in fact, may work with each other, 
or they work in different geographical areas. So they kind of do the same thing, but they don't compete because they're separated by geography. So in my case, for example, um, I worked for a number of electrical utilities because they had conservation programs that they were promoting to their customers. I like that. It sounds boring. I liked it because it's like it's green energy time, right? It's to me, it's the right thing to do. It's like, let's stop, you know, burning coal, polluting the air. Let's convert to become more energy efficient and so on. So I could write about that all day long. And in fact, many days, that's what I wrote about all day long. Um, and I didn't mind that. And, and so we worked for a number of electrical utilities because they're geographically separate, right? They serve a certain area. They don't compete. They all do the same thing. And so they're happy when you know the business, you walk in, you already understand their business. And so they enjoy that. So that to me is finding the customers that you like um, and, and that you're comfortable working on um, and, and how, however you do it. And, you know, it's a, it's a progression. You're, you're not going to do it on day one, but I think you need to have it in your mind that you are going to do this. You're not sitting back and waiting. You're going out to, to find and, and, get in touch with people that, that you want to work with. And, and the other thing is once you get those clients and they tend, in my case, they were corporate clients. So they had lots of business and I formed deep relationships with those clients and I got tons of business without competing for it. I mean, they just call me and say, Oh, I've got another project. Can I send you over some, have a look at it. Call me when you've read it. Right. Well, perfect. Um, no pitch, no prior estimate, nothing, you know, sure. Tell me how much it's going to cost. But it wasn't a question of, are we doing this or not? We are doing it, right? I just need to know how to budget for it. That's all. And, and that's an easy way to work. And I, I see, you know, people on social in different places, how much time and effort they spend in pitching and, and trying to get business and, try, you know, trying to get in. And, it's always part of it. I get it, but it shouldn't be your whole life because it sucks up a lot of time and energy. And ideally you want to have relationships where clients come back to you again and again, and you are their go-to resource for whatever service it is you provide. Right. That, that just makes your life so much easier. And so that's, that's what I think people need to get that into their heads and, and figure out, narrow down, and then go after those people um, and, and then form those kinds of relationships. So that's, 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 what, that's what I would, would, would recommend. Um, you know, find stuff you enjoy doing. You get good at it. The other thing is I, I read people say, oh, I'll follow your passion, right? I, I kind of turn it around on its head, right? Find something that you're good at that will become your passion because it's sort of a feedback loop, right? You find yourself good at something, you like doing it. You find yourself not good at something, well, you don't want to do that, right? So you just naturally resist that. And, and, and so that's, um, you know, that, that's sort of my take uh, on that. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you form those kinds of relationships with clients, inevitably at some point clients will change jobs right they go from one job to another all the time they they took us they took us with them right that was the easiest way to get a new client when one of your clients leaves and goes to a new client so your goal is to hang on to the old client because you have other relationships other than this one person and then to establish a new client where your client has gone to to the company right I, I can't tell you some, some of our biggest clients, like, you know, millions of dollars over course of years came that way. It's, I always call it in through the side door, right? You're not, you're not pitching. You're not part of some formal review. You're brought to the table as a trusted resource. These are the guys that did all this for me. They could do that for our company. Great. Let's go. And that's how we started on, on a number of assignments. Um, and it's all relationships. It, it really is. So, you know, here we are in the midst of a pandemic and, and you know, face-to-face -face is maybe not quite popular again yet. But I think as soon as it gets there, people need to do it. Um, 
you only get so far by, by texting people and, and email and, and so on to build those relationships. Ours, ours was very much old school, not, you know, not for every little thing did you want a meeting, it's a waste of time, um, but you do want to get to know people on a very personal basis. Um, so I call them my business friends. You know, they're, they're, they're not the same as, you know, my family or my personal friends, but they are business friends and, and I cared about them and I think they cared about me. And, and so we, we got on very well. It was, it wasn't casual. It was certainly strictly business, but it was much friendlier than transactional, for example. Right. So that's, that's my take on that. Um, and the other thing we talked about is the notion of professional clients versus amateur clients. So what do I mean by that? Professional clients are clients um, that have dedicated marketing budgets. They have a person who focuses on marketing. Uh, they're not afraid to talk about their budgets. They probably have you know, numerous projects on an ongoing basis. Um, and they, and they work with you in, in that way. The flip side is, is the amateur client. So we've all had meetings with amateur clients. Um, they barely tell you what the thing is about. They don't have a written brief first off because why would they? They would just wanna tell you, preferably on the phone. And so you're scribbling like a madman trying to get this all down, right? It's never complete. It's, there's always something missing, which you find out later as you do the project. Um, and before they even tell you all the details of the project, they want to know how much it costs. Well, you, you, how, how are you going to tell them that? And the reason they want to know how much it costs so soon, way too soon, is because they don't really have a budget for it. And so they want to know because then they're going to have to go back to somebody and say, oh, this is going to cost, you know, pick a number, $5,000, $10,000, right? They don't have it set aside, though. So they're going to have to take that money from something else, right? Which always is strange to me because they have budgets for everything else, okay? You have budgets for your rent, your facilities. You have budgets. You have a payroll. That's a budget. You have taxes. You have all kinds of things. You have a financial person there. They've got spreadsheets. They've got budgets, right? The only thing that's missing is a marketing budget. So you're an amateur client. You don't take marketing seriously. If you took it seriously, you would have a budget. Whatever it is, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So we dealt with smaller clients too, but only if they behaved like professional clients. So we could talk to them about budgets. They would have a budget. It might be a smaller budget, but it would be appropriate to the project, right? So I can happily do a $5,000 job, a $2,000 job, whatever, right? But that's what it is. Your budget is $2,000 and we're going to do a $2,000 job. We're not going to try to do a $20,000 job for two. It doesn't work, right? And, and so, you know, professional clients, you, that back and forth, I mean, even with them, you sometimes give them an estimate and it's more than they expected or more than they budgeted for. But that's fine because then you have an adult conversation about that. And you say, oh, gee, you know, that's, you know, more than I hope. Let's, let's see what we can do and make this thing work. So it's either scale the project down to fit the budget, try to find some other money for it, or, you know, cut a piece off the project and we'll do that piece later, something, right? There's, there's about three or four ways you could do that. And you just go through that and you, you, you pick a way and away you go. Um, but with amateur clients, that becomes a huge roadblock, right? Then they say, oh my God, no, we, we don't have $10,000. Okay, so we can't do anything, right? And, and the other thing is for many of them, realistically, they actually don't want to do the project. They think they have to do it. Sales are down. Somebody said, hey, we should do this, whatever, right? And so this person gets assigned the job of finding somebody to do this with no idea what they're really doing. It's, it's not a great place for, for you know, a freelancer to be in. Um, you're always trying to make it work and you're trying to be helpful and you know, you've got experience with other clients that you think you can bring to this, but realistically, you're, you're, you're pushing water up a hill, right? 
And my, my favorite phrase for this is, you know, I'm trying to steal their lunch money because it's not money that they have budgeted for anything else. And if we take this money for this job, then maybe you can't go out and have a fancy lunch because you just spent the money somewhere else, right? I don't want to do that. I really don't, right? If, if you don't have money set aside for this kind of a project, then can't do it, you know? And, and, and I'm not here to do, you know, a big project for a tiny budget. I, sorry, maybe somebody else will do it for you, but, but no. Right. And, and some, sometimes, you know, you think, well, you know, have a, have a couple of meetings and maybe you could sort of turn this into a more professional client. It rarely works. Um, they're just not there. They don't have their head in that space. They don't have the experience. Often they're kind of doing this, you know, they're wearing 10 hats. This is the 11th hat now. Uh, and they don't quite know what to do. And it's just, it's really, really hard work. And so what I would tell, you know, freelancers out there is, is to sort of figure out early what kind of a person you're sitting in front of. If, if you're, you know, introduced in some way uh, and, and now you're, you're meeting with them for the first time, you, you got to very quickly start looking for, you know, red flags and, and things that set off the alarm bells and say, nah, I don't know. And you, you might just have to find a, a polite way out of it. Um, uh, I'll give you one more quick example of what, what we used to do. One of the guys in my first agency was really good at this. Um, people ask them, how much is this project going to cost? Right? You talk for 15 minutes, and of course, there's way too soon they ask how much. And he would say, well, I can't really tell you how much this project is going to cost uh, because I don't have enough details yet, and I really would want to get it in writing and so on. But I can tell you how much similar projects that we've done cost. So we've done projects that sound a lot like this, and they're usually between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. How does that sound to you? And you could see right away on their faces how it sounds to them. Either you know they're saying, "Oh yeah, that's fine," or they're saying, "Oh no, no," you know, because they didn't want to tell you how much they want to spend. So. And if the guy says, oh, no, that's way too much. And they say, well, what did you have in mind? Right. And the guy will say, oh, you know, $5,000. Okay. So that was your budget. Right. I know you didn't want to tell me a minute ago, but that's what you have in mind. So let's talk about making this a $5,000 project. What we've been talking about so far is a twenty dollars to $30,000 project. We need to scale it back. And then if the meeting didn't progress well after that point, cut it short and leave because you're going to regret every minute of trying to make that work. Um, some things are just not meant to work, you know, and, and it's hard, you know, when we're in this business, you know, we're used to trying to make things work. We, we are creative. We come up with solutions, you know, people give us dry briefing documents and we're supposed to create magic out of it. So we figure, okay, I'm faced with this situation. I got to work a little harder and create some magic here, but sometimes magic doesn't want to be created um and it's, it's not worth doing right find find the ones who want to do it find the professional clients they got money to spend money they have to spend on marketing only on marketing they're 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 my kind of clients right at the at the end of the year they often call you and say you know what i, I got to start these three or four projects if i don't use start using this budget up now i won't get the budget next year so can you just start these three projects, show me something and send me the invoice for the whole thing? My kind of client, <laughs> you know, that's a great December. Thank you. I um, love that. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, that's, those are my thoughts on, on, on those things. Andy, legitimately, this was so fantastic. Thank you so much for your insight, your, your wisdom. You obviously know a thing or two about this. I'm going to go back and listen to this again after. So, Thank you so much for your time. Two, two last questions. One is where can people find your book and what was the name of the book again? Sure. Um, the book is called um, How to Start a Creative Agency. Okay. And it is everywhere. It's on Amazon, Kobo, Apple Books, Gumroad. So whatever format you like, paperback is on Amazon. Uh, uh, ebooks are on the other formats. Uh, PDF is on Gumroad, 
and the website is creativeagencybook.com. Amazing. And the last question I have is for you, is there a social platform? Is it Twitter? Where can people connect with you or, yeah. or, or chat with you? Twitter? Yeah. Tw- Twitter is probably the best. Uh, Strot Books. So S-T-R-O-T-E-B-O-O-K at Strot Book on Twitter. Um, yeah. Reasonably active, easy to find. Amazing. Andy, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.